Hello everyone. Welcome to The Old Man in the Reed. My name is Jerry. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the books I read in the month of March. Um, of the books I read, I think four of them were nonfiction. Uh, I had one book of poetry and then the rest, rest were uh, fictional uh, literature. So uh, uh, with that, I'll show you the books I read. The first book I read was The Enchantress of Florence by Salman Rushdie. And the book begins with a yellow-haired stranger who uh, arrives in India uh, and he's carrying a letter from Queen Elizabeth at, for the Emperor Akbar of the Mughal Empire. He had obtained the letter after stowing away on a ship and uh, um, actually poisoned the captain uh, of the ship and stole the letter. But he uh, presents the letter and uh, he claims uh, to be a relative of Akbar. Uh, he says that uh, he's descended from a sister of Akbar's, uh, or a sister of Akbar's grandfather, uh, uh, who had been abducted when she was a young uh, child. Uh, uh, the uh, and he said her name was Angelica, and uh, the uh, the emperor uh, had it researched, and he discovered that there actually had been a sister of his grandfather who had been uh, had disappeared, and uh, she had been just deleted from history. Her name was Kara Cause, but uh, uh, so the. Emperor started listening to the tales that the stranger was telling him, and the stranger talked about the uh, 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 travels of uh, the sister and her eventual uh, ending up in Florence, Italy. But the story is just full of uh, magical realism, and. Uh, it goes into Persia, the Ottoman Empire, and eventually to Florence and the Medici family. Uh, then the next book I read was House of Sleeping Beauties by Kawabata Yasunari. And uh, this is uh, just a small book of three short stories. The title story, House of Sleeping Beauties, is uh, it's about a 67 year old man who starts visiting a house that uh, offers young women, uh, young naked women to sleep with for old men. Uh, the women are heavily sedated and uh, just completely unable to be awoken and uh, uh, they stay asleep for, throughout the night. Uh, it's really kind of a creepy story. Uh, the, another of the short stories is One Arm, and this is about a woman who has given her uh, right arm uh, to a man for him to take home. And then uh, the third short story is Of Birds and Beasts, and this is about a man who collects uh, birds and dogs, and several of them die on him. Uh, the next book I read was uh, What is Life by Erwin Schrodinger. And this is actually a book I read way back when I was in college, uh, well over 50 years ago. And uh, it's a nonfiction, but it's... Uh, um, a book but written by Erwin Schrodinger uh, from lectures that he did in 1944 uh, titled uh, uh, Lectures or Discussions of Biology uh, from a Physicist's Perspective. And in case you didn't know, Erwin Schrodinger was uh, a, a very uh, well-known uh, physicist and 
had been one of the uh, developers of uh, the quantum theory or quantum mechanics theory. But uh, in the discussion or in the lecture, he uh, uh, noted that living organisms have the same atomic and molecular uh, composition that obey the same laws as any uh, that are in non-living material. Um, he also had predicted a uh, DNA-like uh, substance. Uh, he uh, DNA had not been discovered yet. Uh, it was was about seven years after the lecture that it actually was discovered. But he called it aperiodic crystals. Um, he also talked about mutation. Uh, um, and he thought it was caused by quantum jump uh, and uh, pointed out that uh, uh, a lot of molecules can be composed of the same atoms but in a different uh, construction and he thought that might account for uh, mutation. And then he talked about entropy and how everything decays but in life uh, as he said, it uh, living things do something, and by that he meant uh, uh, metabolism, and uh, so that was uh, that was his discussion of uh, of biology. Uh, okay, the next book was Life Before Man by Margaret Atwood and. This is a story about a married couple, Elizabeth and Nate. Uh, they've been married for 10 years and have uh, two children. But uh, it's really kind of a strange marriage. Uh, they both had numerous uh, lovers throughout their marriage, and, but both of them are aware of it and seem to be okay with it. But then Elizabeth's latest lover uh, commits suicide and she goes into a state of depression. Uh, uh, the Nate, uh, meanwhile, uh, had taken up a new lover. Uh, her name was Leisha and uh, she worked with Elizabeth at a museum. But when Elizabeth found out, she was quite upset. So she uh, took up uh, Leisha's boyfriend as her next lover and then she uh, let him know that Leisha had been cheating on him. Uh, the next book is Into the Valley, Marines at Guadalcanal. And this is actually uh, about the author, uh, written by John Hersey, Hersey uh, when he was a journalist uh, in, embedded with the Marines. Um, he uh, talked about uh, just a small skirmish that the uh, unit he was in got involved in on Guadalcanal. And uh, the company was uh, out on patrol and was caught off guard. Uh, there were Japanese snipers up in the trees and then a mortar barrage uh, that started coming down on them. Uh, they were taking heavy casualties and the men were beginning to panic and uh, going to start running. But then the captain, uh, Captain Rigod, uh, took charge, uh, got them organized and then uh, conducted an orderly retreat. Uh, the next book is uh, The Dawn of Human Culture. Uh, by Richard G. Klein, uh, and uh, this is a story that uh, just follows humankind from the earliest species uh, up to the beginning of agriculture. But it begins with bipedal ape fossils and then uh, goes through the slow evolution of uh, humans over about a seven million year period. And uh, a lot of the points that were made in the book uh, was uh, the first uh, stone tools date back as far as three million years ago. Uh, 
the first recognizable human uh, goes uh, 1.8 million years ago. Uh, then uh, migration out of Africa began about a million years ago. Uh, uh, then they started uh, detecting or finding larger brain cases uh, from dating about 600,000 years ago. Uh, Neanderthals uh, had uh, come about in Europe about 500,000 years ago and later Cro-Magnons uh, which then became modern humans and eventually the story gets into the, the beginnings of uh, culture and agriculture. Uh, the next book I read was The Weary Blues by Langston Hughes. Uh, this is a book of poetry and I believe this might be his first book. But uh, uh, it, this is a book that was published in 1925 and Hughes wrote uh, mostly about the black experience in America in the 1920s. But uh, the title poem, uh, The Weary Blues, is about a man who uh, is playing piano and the uh, um, music seems to be coming from his soul. And then uh, another poem, uh, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, and Hughes uh, talked about how black people seem to uh, be associated with rivers both in Africa and America. The next book I read was Color Colorless Sukuro Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage uh, by Haruki Murakami. And uh, this follows Sukuro Tazaki who grew up with very, four very close friends uh, and those friends only associated with each other. Uh, they, the four friends that he had all had colors in their names but he was the only one who didn't so he was colorless. Uh, but they uh, had grown up and they had all agreed that they would just stay in Nagoya and continue their friendship on through life but uh, he uh, eventually decided to go to Tokyo for college. Uh, he wanted to study uh, railroad station design, I guess it was. Uh, and, but while he was in college, he was told by one of those friends that uh, he was no longer welcome to be their friend. And so this began a 16 year uh, separation. Uh, but then uh, he heard that one of the girls in their group had died and try to uh, discover what had happened and why uh, he had been disowned so many years before. <clears throat> the next book is The First Americans by J.M. Uh, Adivazio. And uh, this begins with uh, a discovery Adivazio made of a fire pit in a rock shelter. Uh, it, the rock shelter was known as Meadowcroft Rock Shelter. And uh, the fire dated back to uh, back 4,000 years earlier than uh, what was previously thought to be the earliest hu Americans or hu humans in America. Uh, and those were the Clovis people. And there was actually a, a very strong archaeological uh, following uh, that believed that Clovis was the first. And uh, so they were disavowing just about everything else that um, would counter that. And so he knew he was in for a bit of trouble with uh, his discovery. Uh, but anyway, the book then goes through uh, the history of archaeology in America and he talks about uh, some of the really very advanced civiliz civilizations that had been in America 
but then how when Europeans came, uh, diseases were introduced that wiped out just about 90% of the population of the native people. Uh, the uh, book then talks about um, other discoveries that uh, date back uh, earlier than the Clovis period and he in talks about one that very interesting one in the Monte Verde in Chile and uh, this is actually the remains remnants of a early village and uh, it dates about back over 12,000 years. Uh, the next book is the complete short story or short novels uh, of Anton, Anton Chekhov and this is he had written uh, five short novels and uh, all five of them are in this book. The first is The Step and uh, this is about a young boy named Egorushka. Uh, he's being sent by his mother to uh, a distant village for an education. Uh, he's being taken by his elderly uncle and the rector of a church. Uh, they uh, first have to catch up with a wagon train that is traveling across the steppe and then once they do then they uh, go with that and uh, the story is basically just the interactions uh, of all the various characters they meet along the way. Uh, the next uh, novel is The Duel and uh, this is about a man who's living with a married woman. Uh, they've been together about two years uh, and had run away together but he was uh, uh, feeling as if he was falling out of love with her. Uh, but then he got in an argument with uh, another man and that man challenged him to a duel with pistols. Uh, so they had the duel, both men missed and uh, then after that uh, uh, the man decided that maybe he really did love the woman and they eventually got married. I got some more novels in this to talk about. Uh, the next one is The Story of an Unknown Man and uh, this is narr narrated by a man who's working as a servant for a wealthy family. He had he was actually a uh, uh, a secret agent uh, working for a revolutionary group uh, and uh, he was uh, had been assigned to, to this uh, to assassinate the wealthy man. But while he was there he was very repelled as, at how that wealthy man was treating his lover but in spite of that he decided he couldn't go through with the assassination and the story kind of evolves from there and uh, he eventually ends up with the baby of the woman that had been uh, uh, fathered by that wealthy man uh, and uh, but she died in childbirth. <clears throat> uh, the next novel in the book is titled Three Years uh, and this is about a wealthy man uh, who falls in love with a young woman uh, but she doesn't love him back uh, but reluctantly agrees to marry him. They both soon realize that it was a mistake but then over the years uh, they finally begin to uh, change their minds. And the last novel in the book is My Life. Uh, this is about a young man who's born into an upper class uh, family but uh, he's really dissatisfied with uh, the work he has to do which is uh, he doesn't like working in an uh, intellectual occupation uh, like he's expected to for somebody from his class and he would rather be a common laborer much to uh, against the father's wishes. Uh, the next book I read was James by Percival Everett, one of my all-time favorite writers. 
But the first half of the book is a retelling of the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Uh, it follows the storyline very closely, and uh, the only difference is that Jim is actually a very intelligent, uh, educated man who's just uh, pretending to be uh, an ignorant slave. Uh, and uh, uh, I got the impression that uh, Everett had kind of put himself into Jim's position and patterned Jim after himself. But uh, the story follows the Huckleberry Finn uh, story pretty much all the way through the encounter they had with uh, the Duke and the Dauphin uh, in the Huckleberry Finn. But then after that it kind of diverged into its own story. And it follows Jim, or James as he preferred being called. Uh, and he had become separated from Huck. And uh, so was basically, it's a story about him trying to avoid capture because he's an escaped slave. Uh, and his intention is to eventually try to gain release of his wife and daughter from slavery. But uh, Everett really holds doesn't hold back in describing the savagery that uh, slavery put on these people. And the last book I read in March is Terrace Bulba uh, by Nikolai Gogol and this is uh, just really a highly romanticized uh, glorification of the Cossacks uh, set in the 16th century that it follows uh, Taras Bulba, who is an aging Cossack, and uh, his two sons. Uh, his two sons had been sent to school for an education and had finally returned home. And so uh, Taras uh, Bulba decided immediately to take them uh, to join uh, a revolt against the Poles so that they could be tested in bloody battle. But those are the books I read in March. Uh, some really excellent books. Uh, but uh, I want to thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on another video. Thanks.